Welcome to Health Matters. We have with us in our studio the world famous ANT specialist, Dr. Chris D'Souza. Dr. Chris D'Souza, though he's an ENT specialist, his niche area of work is cochlear implants. He has a string of accomplishments to his name and he is a master in surgery. He is a DORL, a DNB, and he has a fellowship from the American Association of Neurological Society, a fellowship from the American College of Surgeons, he is the only doctor in India who has the distinction of having been honored by both the Royal College of Surgeons in London and Ireland. That's two FRCS. Well, doctor, how did you decide to branch out into cochlear implants as your niche area? Well, uh, Nirmala, <clears throat> I'd like to thank you for inviting me for this interview and for your gracious introduction. I asked you a question as to how did I branch off into ENT. Well, it was a much sought after specialty and my father was a doctor. So he said, uh, why didn't you try this branch? It was a rapidly evolving and very exciting branch. And that's how I went into that. And uh, I don't regret a minute of it. Why cochlear <clears throat> implants? You know, um, I've dealt, I trained in the U.S., and even when I was training in India, uh, there was a ceiling <clears throat> beyond which you could not go. And that was deafness. And we saw as many a child who came in and uh, we were asked to treat those this children and we could do nothing. So we sent them to schools for the deaf and sign language and things like that. But it was only in the U.S. when I went there where I trained with the really famous Michael Glasscock at uh, Baptist Hospital, Tennessee in 1994. I'm sure many of our viewers were not born then. But I was introduced to the world of cochlear implants. I did, uh, I was the, uh, I assisted Dr. Sandra Disa who did the first cochlear implant in India in 1987, on the 15th of August. But at that time, as you can well imagine, <clears throat> the device was very primitive. It was just evolving. So anybody who, got, who was deaf got a cochlear implant. And gradually, as time went by, and the device evolved, and our understanding as to how these devices functioned, results started to improve. So I got into uh, cochlear implants about 17 years ago after having witnessed the first cochlear implant in India and training in cochlear implants in the, in the US. So I found that we could actually <clears throat> miraculously restore hearing in children who are deaf and in adults who had also gone deaf. Now, as we go down this talk a little later, perhaps we can talk about the two categories. Yeah. yeah. Will you elaborate on uh, this uh, cochlear implant surgery? Is it an uh, invasive um, surgery? <clears throat> yes, you know, um, uh, cochlear implant surgery is a very, um, it is an invasive surgery because you go into the heart of the inner ear, that is the cochlea, mm. and you stimulate it uh, electrically. <clears throat> okay. The, the surgery is uh, complex because you have to deal with a whole lot of anatomical configurations. But the device is very costly. It's about uh, six and a half lakhs. Mm -hmm. So when you're inserting the device, then you have to be very careful not to damage the device. And <clears throat> so you have to make sure that the device is inserted correctly. So it is a challenging surgery under some uh, circumstances. It takes a lot of training to understand the, the mechanics of the device, how to handle the device, and of course the surgery is how to insert the device. Uh, how long did, does it take to recover from this surgery? Um, recovery is almost immediate. That is to say, if I do the surgery on a Saturday, we discharge the patient on a Sunday. But what we do is that uh, we do a CT scan immediately after the surgery to check if the device is properly fitted into the cochlea. Okay. And once we remove the stitches after a week, 
we allow another week to lapse before we turn on the device and the person actually starts hearing. Okay. So, it's two weeks after the surgery that we turn on the device so that the person can start hearing and benefit from the device. So, when you turn on the device, the hearing is instantaneous. So, is there any more uh, uh, therapy or something? Well, like that? it is instantaneous. Now, uh, you know, children who have gone deaf and have not heard before, and you turn the device on full volume, they actually will scream and run out of the room. Mm -hmm. So we have to begin from a barely audible sound Decibles and increase it. Increasing. Yeah, and increase it to the patient's comfort level. Now, the child has not heard sound before, so we have to ask them by making sounds, is it okay, is it comfortable? And once we raise it to the child's comfort level, we leave it at that point. Okay. And that's when therapy starts, it's audio verbal therapy. That is to say, we send them to a school and the, the child will begin to acquire speech and language mm -hmm. like any ordinary child. Now, there are, two, uh, there are two things that we do which are a little different, and that is we insert the device in both ears the same, at the same time. Okay. This enables, we, uh, there have been a lot of uh, results that have been in medical literature which show that if, if we insert the device in both ears at the same sitting, the results are just phenomenal. The child develops like a normal child, acquire, can hear clearly, acquire speech and language, and then enrolls in schools for children with normal hearing. That is the miracle. Okay. Integrates into normal society. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. What is the best age to get a cochlear implant? I'm, I'm saying that an uh, older person or a younger person, who adapts to it more quickly? Well, you know, uh, let me begin with children. It is important to get children by the age of two. Mm -hmm. There is a science known as neuroplasticity. Mm -hmm. That is to say, when we are born, all the stimuli that we are um, exposed to gets directed to the brain mm -hmm. to certain areas. That is to say, the brain will say, hearing stimuli, audio stimuli, will take it to the center mm -hmm. in the brain responsible for hearing. And then as time goes by, it processes and it develops. So this center of neuroplasticity is at its peak at the age of two. Then gradually after that, it drops off till it becomes just a tiny little okay. speck. So we stop at the age of five because then rehabilitation with the children is that much more difficult. difficult. So we try to catch them young. By two is the best age. Mm -hmm. We implant both ears. And these children do magnificently well. That's one part. The second part is, say, adults who have already acquired speech and language mm. and then go deaf. We have many such persons. And we put in the device. They hear almost instantly. And I cannot tell you the amount of profound happiness and relief that we see on their faces when we turn on the device. Amazing. Okay. Really amazing. Yeah. Coming to the cost of the surgery, how much, uh, I mean, how, how costly is it? Well, you know, the, um, it's divided into three parts. The first, the investigations. Mm -hmm. That is to say, we do hearing tests, which are not very expensive. Then comes the CT scan. Again, it, it comes to approximately about 5,000 rupees. Mm -hmm. okay. Then comes the device, which is... Um, that's formidable. You're the, talking about the initial the, diagnosis is 5,000. Yeah, the initial to diagnose is the child mm -hmm. profoundly deaf and irreversibly so. Okay. There are some people who are profoundly deaf, but if you give them medication, we can reverse that. Okay. They can hear normally. Okay. But that's few and far between. So we try to make sure that we know for sure that the child is profoundly deaf. Now, as you will well know, uh, a, an infant can't tell you I can't hear. Mm. So we have a whole array of computerized tests okay. which are, can be replicated in any other <clears throat> hearing center okay. and confirm that the diagnosis that the child is indeed deaf. And I use the word profoundly deaf and irreversibly so. Okay. Because in case the child is deaf but has some residue of hearing, oh. then we fit those children with hearing aids. Okay. Because as you correctly said, it is a very invasive surgery. So why would we want to subject a person mm -hmm. to that if the person will benefit from a hearing aid? Okay. 
Now, in adults who have gone deaf, again, we clarify and verify and make sure that we, our diagnosis is indeed correct. Okay. So the cost of the cochlear implant is six and a half lakhs, another lakh for one lakh rupees for hospitalization. And then comes audio verbal therapy, which depends from center to center. So it is uh, costly, but we have had many patrons and donors mm -hmm. in the form of um, Mr. Ratan Tata, who through <coughs> the Tata Trusts have helped many children in our organization. Mr. Salman Khan, phenomenally generous and gracious, has given us a whole lot of money uh, for through his Being Human Foundation. Okay. So these two people have been absolutely stellar, but we've had many private donors who come across and given us 5,000 rupees, 10,000 rupees, which all Added build up. up to a big corpus through which we can serve the children who come to us. Okay. So you would have to qualify that you are economically disadvantaged to benefit from this. Because yes. Yes, indeed. Because if you can afford it, then it's all yours. That's, that's correct. Oh, okay. And how long does this cochlear implant last? Is it for a lifetime? Well, um, it, it lasts a lifetime. It is supposed to last a lifetime, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> like all um, devices, it can fail. So we can remove it and insert another. But I'll give you an example. I started this, uh, this surgery 17 years ago. Okay. And um, I implanted a young lady and the device is still functioning. She works in an office and nobody knows that she has a cochlear implant. She can speak on the phone and things like that. And she's married a young man who has absolutely normal hearing. So okay. that is our pride and joy when we see somebody like that lift themselves out of poverty, integrate into society and lead happy and meaningful lives. Okay, that satisfaction you can uh, well pays all the trouble and hardship that you have to undergo. It certainly it. does. Okay, then um, what I wanted to know is you lead such a stressful life because all this must be stressful. You said you have written about 50 books. <coughs> yes, I have. Yeah, so you're busy all the time. How do you de-stress yourself? Well, um, First of all, in the, when I was learning these surgeries, I was very stressed out. Mm -hmm. Now, after uh, many years, I'm not as stressed out as I once was. Mm -hmm. But I play a uh, concert guitar. I learned from the very famous um, Goan musician. Many of you all might know him, Anibal Castro. And I was his only student and he was an, an amazing musician. So I used to go to his home and we used to play five hours a day on Sunday. So I play a guitar, uh, I try to practice as often as I can. And the problem is that once I start playing, then I forget time. And then my wife has to say, the hospital is calling you and you're, you know, so then <laughs> okay, I do. Okay. What is the future of uh, cochlear implants <clears throat> in India? Oh, just amazing. The future is just amazing. <clears throat> as time goes by, the device is going to get better and better and better and evolve. Now, there are very few things that people know, and that is ultimately hearing is in the brain. So the cochlear implant is in the form of a snail shell. Yeah, our Yeah, viewers. it's in the form of a spiral. And <clears throat> when the, the cochlear decodes itself in the brain, it has a linear uh, structure. So if people who have had both their cochleas damaged, we can insert the device in the brain. It's known as auditory brainstem implant. So that brain is the future. The future is just amazing and just phenomenal. So I think people who will come after me will really, will, I mean, do tremendous things, phenomenal things. You said that when you began uh, in this field of, in this field of cochlear implants, uh, the first primitive device to now what you handle, has there been a a range of uh, what you call refining in this uh, instrument. Amazing, absolutely amazing. I'm so thankful you asked me that question. When the device was first inserted, it was a single electrode and single channel. Okay. So, you know, when you turn it on, people got sound awareness. That is to say, they couldn't understand speech, but if somebody opened the door or something, they could say, ah, there's a sound somewhere. Okay. But that was a single channel, single electrode. 
Now we have, you know, 12 pairs of electrodes in multi-channel. So the improvement has just been phenomenal. The growth is exponential. And um, we are the beneficiaries of all those, uh, of all that research that has gone. Okay. So we would like to show our <coughs> viewers a picture of a cochlear implant to help them understand this device, is it seen externally a lot or? Uh, well, you know, it? the device um, comes in two parts. We take an incision behind the ear and we implant it into the cochlea. Then we stitch it up okay. so it can't be seen. That is the cochlear implant. Okay. But then on top of that, we have the microphone, which is known as the speech processor. Okay. So what the, um, the speech processor does, it takes in all the sound, it transmits across, uh, across the skin, by radio frequency, where in the cochlear implant it is decoded. I'll give you an, an example. It's like a spiral staircase with multiple doorbells on it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it depends on which doorbell is being stimulated by which electrode. That's why we have 12 pairs of, elect of um, electrodes. Mm -hmm. So it all fits in with the hearing range. Mm -hmm. So our purpose by doing this is to help the person hear clearly and acquire speech and language. And the third thing that we insist on is that that child should enroll in schools for children with normal hearing. Okay. Can you give us a head count of how many such surgeries you've done, just for our viewers to know? Uh, we've done over 500. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the thing to what I'd like our viewers to know, there are various kinds of hearing problems. Mm -hmm. So people who've got, you know, deformed ears and um, through a congenital malformation, okay. Those people don't need a cochlear implant. They need a different device. Okay. So we are one of the few centers in India that have the whole array. We are also going to insert the device into the brain. We have three children uh, lined okay. up. So, you know, we're going to be the, hopefully, in a short span of time, we'll be the second center in India to uh, be able to do these auditory brain stem implants. But we've done 500 and counting because we, uh, during the pandemic, uh, unfortunately, funding stopped. But despite that, uh, because we had to do it by the age of two, we did several devices in children. And I'm very happy and proud to say that neither did the children, their parents, their caregivers, the staff, or one of us got COVID. Praise God. And uh, yeah, it was, you know, it was a nerve-wracking time. Maybe I should have played guitar more at that time. <laughs> okay. But uh, <clears throat> the... Um, we did the surgery very safely and uh, the children did very well and we got a papal acknowledgement. We got a blessing from the Pope acknowledging our work in the pandemic. Uh, one last <clears throat> question. What role does a spirituality play in your life in, in such a vast uh, <clears throat> field that you... You know, um, I'm, I, uh, I'm a Goan and a true Goan. We believe in God and... Um, Spirituality is everything. You know, um, the power of prayer cannot be, uh, cannot be exaggerated. It is very important. We pray for our patients. We pray for ourselves that we do the right thing. We pray that patients benefit from the device. Though I may be a good surgeon and something can go wrong. So we, we, we pray. Spirituality is everything in this. Without it, I would be hesitant to practice medicine. Uh, in the pandemic, you said you have written a book. Uh, what is the name of that book? Well, in the pandemic, I've written two books. Okay. One is uh, The Management of Head and Neck Cancer with people from Harvard and from the U.S. What we found was that uh, people were so terrified of COVID mm -hmm. that they'd much rather die of cancer than of COVID. And unfortunately, <laughs> okay. many people stayed at home and their cancer became untreatable. Yes. So, um book at that time was to help our colleagues mm -hmm. come up with a, with a protocol so that they could treat both. So you have to decide if a person got severe COVID and you know, are you going to treat his cancer? Mm -hmm. So how to balance out everything okay. Okay. successfully. The second the book that I wrote was Challenges in the Pandemic, which got me a lot of international praise. I wrote it with some of the world's best doctors and they were not ENT doctors. They were doctors from, from the US intensivists. And we wrote this book, it was called Challenges in the Pandemic. There was so, so much of misinformation on WhatsApp, etc., on social media. So our 
I, our goal was to make sure that we provided real, meaningful treatment modalities, which will still help because, as you know, the pandemic is not yet over. Right. I think we've come to an end of this interview. I am so happy that you could come here and share all this information that you have with our viewers. I wish you all the very best in your future work. In the Thank you so much uh, for your kind invitation, which I was very happy to accept. And um, it's been a real delight to come here, come back to Goa and be part of this interview. Thank you very much. We will Thank share you. the place of your work <coughs> with our viewers sure. and your <coughs> contact number yeah, you can any... share my email my contact number I um, request people who want to get in touch with me to do it on email because okay. it is easier for me to give a structured answer than on uh, on the phone sometimes if I'm in busy in surgery they may call up and the nurse will answer okay. but on email I will not miss out I'll give them a structured reply thank you oh, thank you very much